My name is Ed McCoslin. I enlisted um, in the U.S. Air Force in 1962 at the age of 17, right out of high school. Uh, from my enlistment, I was sent to Lackland Air Force Base in Texas for boot camp. During my tour in boot camp was during the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis. So at the time of the crisis, uh, all of our training ceased. It was, uh, of course, a very high restrictive time. Uh, it was a time when there wasn't uh, wasn't much going on except a lot of concern about are we going to nuclear war with Russia and over Cuba and what was going to happen. Well, as we know now that uh, the crisis didn't last very long, and we resumed our our training. And upon graduation from boot camp, I was assigned to Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. During my tour in California, I was involved with the launching of intercontinental ballistic missiles into the South Pacific. Uh, I, that's what I did for my entire tour, which this was during the early days of Vietnam. Um, prior to a lot of the big buildup and a lot of things that were going on. Uh, we were aware of Vietnam, we knew what was going on, uh, we didn't have much involvement with it because our time was being spent uh, trying to see if we could hit a big island in the South Pacific or a small island with these missiles. We dealt with Titans, uh, Atlas, uh, different kinds of missiles like this. Uh, and eventually coming around to the uh, the Minuteman, which is uh, currently being used. During the time I was there, of course, there was always some kind of things that were going on. There was uh, one specific time that I recall that uh, this was in the uh, the midst of the Cold War and all things going on that. Uh, we were doing a countdown on a missile launch. Uh, this was a silo launch, and so we were counting it down, and we counted down to zero, and then it started plus counting, and it was going up to plus one, plus two, plus three, and there was no missile launch. And what we eventually found out, and the way we found out, is we had cameras marked, uh, mounted on World War II gun turrets. And they had these big lenses so that they could follow these missiles as they went down range. So this, the one cameraman, um, of course the cameras were on every possible angle of a missile for its launch because they wanted to see everything. If something went wrong, they wanted to know. So the cameraman that was set up and the, the plus count was going on, the, the cameraman then came up with his gun turret and he turned out over the ocean. We were right on the, the coast. And he zoomed in out to the five mile limit and there was a Russian trawler sitting out there. And so there was no launch. It was uh, considered a classified launch and the Russians were sitting out there wanting to watch this and so they didn't launch because of the this was out there. Um, sometimes we had we had mistakes when when the missiles were being launched they would uh, go up and of course they were supposed to go out over the ocean and headed down toward the South Pacific. Usually an area in the vicinity of Johnston Island. Now I can't tell you exactly where that's at, but that was the general area that these missiles were being fired. Well, sometimes they didn't go where they were supposed to go. And so they were all equipped with explosives so that if the missile took off and it went inland, then they were detonated and blown up so before they would get into an area where they might come down and, and cause problems. But there was one time when when the launch came up and the missile just laid down on the ground and it was just kind of scooting along not too far off the ground and again the cameras were following it. Well then the cameraman kind of got ahead of it a little bit and when he did that there's a guard shack 
and this missile is headed right for the guard shack. And here's this guard just running across country as hard as he could, because that's right where that missile was just headed. Uh, so, you know, that's another one of the, the times of the, of the things that went on. Uh, in some of the early days when you had a missile launch, the, the doors opened like this, and then the missile would be launched. Well, that changed after, after one time that Hello? The, Sorry about that, sir. Coming in. that a missile, the doors opened, and the missile was launched, and it came up out of the silo about halfway out, and one of those doors slammed shut. And the, the ensuing explosion just totally destroyed that pad and that missile silo that they were never able to use it again. But following that, and they go through the process of learning about what they're doing, then they develop the sliding door to launch the missiles out. They slide it open, and then they launch the missiles. So this is, this is the time of, uh, that was going on in, as I say, early, early Vietnam. Uh, we were not too involved with what was going on at that time. We didn't have any units in Vietnam until either 65 or 66. Then some of our people went over there and, and they were actually set up in downtown Saigon. Now this was, this was the documentation. These were the photographic people, not the not missile people. Uh, I was actually assigned to the 1369th Photo Squadron for the Air Force, which is uh, part of the Military Air Transport Service. So while our people were in Saigon and running their lab and doing their things, they made a movie uh, or took a uh, movie of filmed the activities in downtown Saigon of 1966. And I actually still have a copy of that movie. And before coming over this time, we've had it uh, put onto a DVD. And we're going to see if anybody's interested in, in looking at it. Uh, I took my, my discharge in 1966. And I returned to Wyoming. Um, I bought a uh, 1954 Lincoln from a tech sergeant who got transferred overseas. I paid $200 for it. And I drove it home. And when I got home, people were starting to, to you know, have the Vietnam things. And there was an old World War II vet who was involved in the American Legion down in Rock Springs. And by this time, the Legion had decided that I qualified due to the dates that they attached to the uh, Vietnam War to become a member of the American Legion as a Vietnam era veteran. So I joined the Legion in Rock Springs. And in 1967, at the American Legion National Convention, they decided that they wanted one Vietnam era veteran from every state in the Wyoming or every state in the Union to attend this national convention in Boston. And I was selected to be the Wyoming representative and they paid all of my expenses to go back to Boston. While I was in Boston, this was kind of the end of an era of a, a family, the family of, of Major Marcus Reno. And uh, if you know who Marcus Reno was, he was George Custer's second in command at the Battle of the Little Big Bighorn. Well, he died a pauper and was buried in a pauper's grave in Washington, D.C. as he was trying to clear his name. His family continued that fight, and in the mid-60s, they finally got a reversal and cleared his name as being responsible for the death of George Armstrong Custer. Well, as the Wyoming Vietnam era veteran at the National Convention, the people that were responsible for this made me an honorary pallbearer for the reburial of Major Marcus Reno in the Little Bighorn Battle 
National Cemetery up in Montana. That's really amazing. So I returned from uh, Boston. I got into Rock Springs um, and drove to Montana the next day, participated in the ceremony. Uh, during the ceremony, I was standing behind a Native American lady, uh, elderly lady, who was alive and in the village, in the Indian village, at the time of the battle. Wow. So, uh, I guess that's that's my story as to everything that that went on. Um, as I say, I don't consider myself a Vietnam veteran. Uh, it's somebody else that's decided that for me. Uh, I almost didn't come down, and I thought seriously, that, you know, I don't belong here. I don't have the same experiences that these guys have uh, that, that came home. <clears throat> I haven't suffered the same things that they suffered. So uh, I'm very supportive of them. I'm glad that they came home. Uh, I feel honored to be with them, but I don't feel I am one of them. Do, um, I guess the one other thing is that I, in my family right now, I have three active duty. Uh, my son, who will retire from the Navy, uh, his last date of service will be July 31st. Uh, he was special ops doing time in uh, Afghanistan and, and a lot of the areas, of the troubled areas of the country. Uh, a grandson who's a Marine, um, who's served in, Via in Afghanistan um, and a lot of other areas. And my granddaughter is Navy. She's currently stationed out uh, on Whidbey Island in Washington at the Naval Air Station. So I still have three and, and I'm very proud of them. I think that's amazing. 